Hello everyone, welcome to In 5 Minutes. Now we are going to study the design techniques of the filter. It is necessary to design a digital filter because we have to eliminate noise and secondly we have to extract the signal which we need. So basically a digital filter is a device that is used in digital signal processing. There are several techniques but first an analog filter is to be designed because we have seen that it is practically not possible to design a digital filter. There are two methods basically. Let us have a look on that. The first method is called as impulse invariance transformation. And the second method is called as bilinear transformation. Now we will study these two methods and let us see that. The first method that is impulse invariance transformation. In impulse invariant transformation, it is necessary to develop an IIR transfer function whose impulse response is the sampled version of impulse response of the analog filter. The main idea behind this technique is to preserve the frequency response of the filter. Now we can see that the frequency response of the digital filter will be identical to analog filter. But this will happen only if that the sampling time period t is sufficiently small or the sampling frequency that is 1 by t should be very high. So to avoid the effects of aliasing. So this is the kind of impulse invariant transformation. Let us prove the impulse response of the filter and how this transformation is used. We can see that let h of t be impulse response of analog filter. Now Laplace transform of the analog impulse response h of t gives the transfer function of analog filter. That is the transfer function of analog filter that is h of s is equal to Laplace h of t. Now we can see that h of s has n number of distinct poles and it can be expressed like uh, using a partial fraction expansion. So let us say h of s is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to capital N a upon s plus p i and let us say that it is a i. So when we expand this term we will get a1 upon s plus p1 plus a2 upon s plus p2 and it goes on till a n upon s plus p n. Now we can take a inverse Laplace transform but by taking the inverse Laplace transform we must know that Laplace of e raised to minus a t u of t is equivalent of 1 upon s plus a. Now it is feasible to take the inverse Laplace transform. 